Välkomna till presskonferens efter den här matchen i Herrar SPL. Vi har Södertälje mot Borås och Borås vinner med 94-75. Först går vi till gästande coach Henrik Sonko. Så berätta lite med dina egna ord om matchen. Can you tell us in your words about this game, please? Uh, of course, we uh, when we finally have the full rotation, we want to play with high intensity for 40 minutes. That's so strange. We have a deep team and many good one-on-one -on -one defenders, and I think we did a good. We see him there, uh, Mejas. I hope I pronounced it the right way. Didn't play. Of course, we want to put even more pressure because they lack ball handlers and experienced ball handlers. I think we did it up to 75-80 percent pretty good. We also want to play in a high pace. Uh, and we did that also 70-80% good. We slowed down a little bit some momentum on the game. We need to adjust that. Then I think we did really, really good job offensive rebounding, follow our transition defense system, tagging up uh, pretty well. Um, a good, very good, important win for us on the road. Every time you win on the road, you should be happy, especially this year when it's a very, very even league. Yeah. So uh, looking at the league, uh, looking forward, uh, how do you feel? Uh, this is a good win, you say, but uh, do you see the team is it going on the way up, or is it? Um, what you, what's your plan, or what's your feeling? Uh, the last seven, eight weeks, I think we finally start to have rhythm. We have players in practice every day instead of on the side, and then I see us taking a progress every day defensively and offensively, and also making reads and adjustments. I think we have a good team that can challenge uh, in the end if we keep finding and working on our rhythm, yes. Yeah. Uh, looking at your players in the team, you have two players, 30 and 34 points today. Of course, that's really good for you. I tell those two guys uh, every day that um, this year we've been in Borås, me and Coach Henrik has and, and Jonas have been having a lot of guys from different countries that they come and play with us and then move up. We have Elvar, Zach, Avery, Bodhi, Anton, Dre, uh, Mike Moore, and I say that they are as good as them we have had. You have really the chance to, okay, salary is one thing, but also play with, we have totally other situation around uh, with, you know, the level of basketball, people in the stand, uh, the people in the staff and so on. And they really have that possibility. They are both young and very coachable and work really hard and have big skills. Yeah. So, and congratulations to this win, of course. And uh, we pass the question over to Sorotelli's coach, Saji Broge Garcia. Can you please tell us uh, your feelings and uh, and the summary of this game, please? I mean, uh, we knew from the beginning that this would be a really tough game for us. I mean, we two days ago, uh, I mean, we got injury of Jorge in Lulio. And we thought that was nothing big, but then uh, we still don't know, honestly. So. Uh, we decided to not risk anything until we wait for a specialist and everything. So, of course, uh, first uh, some injuries, then uh, Anthony leaving last week, now uh, Jorge injured. So, of course, the team changed a lot. I mean, right now we have four professional players and we have uh, six, seven guys, uh, 17, 18 years old, uh, doing a, a really good job during the week to help us to practice, to help to, to grow as a team. But of course, it's not the perfect situation. So we knew it would be a hard game, and we had to do a little bit extra. And I think that uh, one thing that killed us was our first uh, quarter in defense, that we make some, some I don't know, unbelievable fouls, that we send them to free throw line like 12 times in the first quarter. And that gave a lot of confidence to, to two guys, uh, Godfrey and Watson. And then, of course, they kept going, and we were not good in defense. And then the other thing that killed us was the offensive rebounds, that uh, in the moments that we started to play good defense, they had second chance, third chance. And that was the two factors for me that uh, didn't help us to stay a little bit more connected to the game. I don't think that uh, we had a real chance today during the game because they were doing a really good job. But uh, we still have to be better if we want to, to win games. Yeah, uh, you you uh, talking about the injury of Jorge? Of course, it's uh, um, it's a uh, problem for the team. Uh, you don't know what's the problem with Jorge. It's uh, I know it's something with the knee, but uh, yeah, I mean it's something with the meniscus, but uh, we don't know honestly. It's nothing like uh, in the ligaments, so that's a positive thing. But it's a little bit in the meniscus, and then we don't know. He was feeling really good uh, two days ago, and he wanted to play. We tried him on the side with some sliding, with some strength, with Clemente. And they were feeling really good, both of them. But then we had the uh, appointment with the doctor, and we say that mm. we have to wait because uh, it can be a high yeah. risk. Yeah. Then uh, we will wait one more week, and as soon as we know, uh, I'm 
I'm open for this, so I'm not. I don't have any secrets about this, but we don't <laughs> know yet. So yeah. So what about the young young guys playing today? They they get a lot of minutes more than they normally have, and uh, what do you think about their performance today? They should be happy that we were only four professional players today, because the first half the defense they played, uh, they they probably didn't deserve a second chance, but uh, but honestly, second half was much better. Uh, defensively and offensively. I mean, we had some guys playing a solid game in the second half. Uh, for example, Gustav Schildstrom, but uh, and Gustav Skuk, honestly, also in the second half. But uh, they have to be better. Now they have the chance, and like I told them, now you have the chance, you have to get it. Because if not, as soon as we have a longer roster, I don't want to hear no complaints why I'm not playing. You already have your chances during the year. My friend, now it's about winning games, and, and they have to be better. They have to be better, and I already told them they know. So uh, we will work hard uh, next week to see if they can improve better defense. Uh, that's the minimum thing that they have to give us great defense. And then the other things, uh, shots, everything will go up and down. But uh, the level of defense has to be much better. Yeah, of course, it's not not funny to to, to discuss uh, injuries. But uh, I know Martin has had some problems uh, on and off this season. How is his status now? He get a lot of minutes today. Uh, is he? He's is uh, he he's feeling better and better and better. I mean, I will. Say, I don't want to say, of course, that he's clear, but uh, he's uh, he's feeling better and better. And I think that uh, he has been really good for us lately. Also, he has helped us to win some big games, and he's doing a great job. He's our captain, our leader, and he's amazing. So uh, I'm happy with that. And then, of course, uh, now hopefully Jorge is back in two weeks. Uh, hopefully Anton, I mean, Anton, if everything goes well in two weeks, he will be playing. So we will add one more player. So, of course, the team will change a lot. Then um, hopefully we can make a good recruitment and we can improve a lot the team. Because I think that if we continue working good, we'll be a really dangerous team at the end, and that's the goal. So we have to stay focused for the next two weeks and keep working. It's the only fucking way. Yeah. Uh, we uh, wish you luck, of course, with uh, everything you do in the uh, coming uh, weeks, and uh, hope for the best with uh, injuries and everything around the team. Thank so, you so much. thank you for both of you to coming to this pre press conference, and uh, wish you a nice journey home for Boros. Okay? Thank you. Thank you.